Hi, and welcome to the Highlander Highlights, a short program about the 4th Brigade 1st Armored Division. I'm your host, Sergeant Jared Simpkins. The Brigade's Advise and Assist Mission, or AAB, is unique because it is designed to fit the stability operations environment and demonstrates the adaptability of our soldiers. The 4th Brigade recently held an event focused on capturing lessons learned for the AAB. Fort Bliss's 4th Brigade 1st Armored Division recently hosted a Advise and Assist Brigade conference in Iraq. Working groups comprised of Corps, Division, TRADOC, and the 4th Brigade staff captured the best strategies and techniques to aid future brigades with the Advise and Assist mission. 4th Brigade's Operations Officer, Lt. Col. Lance Varney, talks about how an Advise and Assist Brigade is employed with a provincial reconstruction team. We provide movement support, provide contracting uh, support, provide uh, insight into collecting uh, intelligence and synchronizing the engagements, do a lot of stuff that the PRT leaders have had to do in the, in the past on their own, uh, thus freeing them up uh, to do what they do best. Dakar PRT leader Dr. Anna Prouse talks about how her team and the Highland Brigade work together. Everyone immediately understood what the PRT is about and on our side we understood how you could help us to improve our capacity in the province and we are using this model very effectively. As the U.S. mission moves from combat to stability operations, advisory and assistance brigades partner with Iraqi security forces to enhance their capabilities. In Dakar, Maison, and Muthana provinces, the Highlander Brigade trains Iraqi army and police and border enforcement units. Lieutenant General Charles Jacoby talks about the Highlander's success. And so what you did here, uh, I think, will echo for a while and there are hungry folks that are waiting for this material and waiting for the synthesis of your experiences. The mission of advise and assist brigades is key to a successful relief in place with the Iraqi security forces. Reporting from Talil, Iraq, I'm Army Sergeant Jared Simpkins. Greetings from Southern Iraq. As we approach the halfway point in our deployment, I'd like to take a minute and thank the Highlanders for their exceptional dedication and performance of their duties in advising, assisting, and enabling our Iraqi security force partners. Every day, your devotion to your duty brings them one step closer to being able to secure the Iraqi people on their own. I'd also like to take a minute and thank our families at home and our supporters in the El Paso and Fort Bliss communities for our unwavering support to our efforts. Stay safe, we still have six more months to go. Though focused on advising and assisting the Iraqi security forces, our soldiers must remain prepared for anything. The perishable skills of a soldier are maintained by training and exercises. First Armored Division's 4th Brigade Combat Team recently participated in an installation-wide mass casualty exercise in Iraq. Highlander medics, along with contingency operating base adder firefighters, jumped to the aid of role-playing casualties, while Iraqi trauma physicians and media observed. At the Cobb Adder aid station, the combined effort of hundreds of soldiers comes together. These type of scenarios brings it back into focus that, hey, we can get injured at any, any, any given point. You know, a rocket can land right now and take us out, and the guy next to you, if he's, on, if he's been through TC3 or combat lifesaver, that guy's gonna save your life. This emergency responder drill was one of many ways to protect the thousands of personnel at Cobb Adder. Reporting for the 4th Brigade Combat Team, I'm Army Sergeant Jared Simpkins. Right now off the... the contributions Highlander soldiers are making to the people of Southern Iraq are no doubt unparalleled, but family and friends don't get to see what it's like behind the scenes. Staff Sergeant Guillermo Rivera gives us that opportunity. Well, I'm, I'm originally from Puerto Rico. I'm born and raised in Puerto Rico. I'm an island boy. I love, I love the island. I like the weather, the sun, the beach, the rum. It's the best juice I ever made. This is the, the bomb right here. I've been married for 15 years. The beautiful wife, is, um, her name is Gloria Mar. I got two beautiful kids, uh, two, two boys, uh, teenagers. I know my sons, every time I, I, I got to go out, they, gonna, they get upset and ask me to do something else. I live my life simple. I see you use like sleeping bag. A lot of people use blanket, use my sleeping bag. When I got here, my goal was to lose some weight. 
So, so far, I've been successful. I've been losing so far 15 pounds. I've been in the Army 11 years, and I've been deployed a lot of times. I've been all around this world. Um, we're doing sustainment replenishment operation. We take all the mail, the water, the fuel, everything that need to sustain and conduct mission. I provide the security for those type of convoys. I military is in once in charge. We train them and our battle drills, how we conduct convoys, how we secure our convoys, how we react to different scenarios. Being this is my third deployment, and then this is the first time that I actually work with them. I sh we should have done this a long time ago. My soldiers enjoy it doing what they do. This is President De La Serra, my lead gun truck gunner. Anything there? This. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm enjoying working with soldiers, training soldiers. People ask me, why you don't go warrant? Why you don't go officer? Look, I love training soldiers. I love doing this. So, this is what I do. I love this. Just like the mass casualty exercise, the Highlander Brigade offers development to soldiers like Staff Sergeant Rivera in other ways. Set. Begin. Soldiers from 1st Armored Division's 4th Brigade Combat Team executed a two-day test of professional development and senior leadership training in Iraq. After months of preparation, soldiers demonstrated their skill competencies in a variety of boards and PT tests. Sergeant Audie Murphy Club candidates displayed their technical knowledge in hopes to join an elite status of NCOs. Sergeant First Class Sean O'Connor talks about how his preparation helped him grow. Just by studying for the board, I learned a lot about myself, a lot about Army leadership, what's expected of me at all levels of leadership, from team leader all the way up to platoon sergeant. I know my platoon now, they've, they've seen what I can accomplish as a platoon sergeant, and they know that there is no, there's no limit as far as rank goes, as who goes to boards, and, and they see the benefits of, of putting yourself out there for your senior leaders to see. A first sergeant's conference headlined the events this week, where senior NCOs gathered to refocus on skills in a deployed environment. Over 35 first sergeants from different companies, troops, and batteries shared knowledge in working groups before briefing each other in lessons learned. Again, it's part of slowing down and giving back, and more importantly, what you take from here and how you affect the organization. It's not only about ISF, it's not only about doing the combat mission stuff, it's about restocking, it's about coaching, teaching, mentoring, training, and sustaining ourselves. Go. Go. Following the conference, the boards, and the evaluations, the Highlanders took time to recognize those who achieved. <laughs> Reporting for the 4th Brigade Combat Team, I'm Army Sergeant Jared Simpkins. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Highlander Highlights. Make sure to log on to our Facebook page for more stories, pictures, and video of your Highlander soldiers. Until next time, I'm Army Sergeant Jared Simpkins. <laughs>